Greetings, fellow humans. Welcome to Sam and Max Hit the Books. I'm Max. I'm Sam. And we are here with the comics that came out on the 24th of April, 2019. Uh, let's get right into it with the third and final issue of Michel Fife's G.I. Joe Sierra Muerte. Uh, I thought this was the best issue so far. Yeah, I like this one the best. Yeah, in as much as I understood everything that was happening. <laughs> and uh, we got some good... Uh, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow action. I did like when Snake Eyes got stealth painted and it turned him into Red Snake Eyes. Yeah. A video game uh, alternate model type thing. True. Um, I liked the gag at the end where uh, we find out that the illness that Cobra Commander has been suffering from that was the impetus for him to need a body swap was just Dr. Mindbender gave him the flu. Yeah. <laughs> so that no they could take deal. over. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah? It was fine. It was the best issue of a pretty average series. I'd say so. Um, very much like Saturday morning cartoon-ish, honestly, this issue, even compared to the first two. Yeah. Which seemed like they were setting up a lot of drama and bringing in a lot of characters, most of which didn't matter too much. (laughs) Yeah, most of which didn't matter at all. At all. Um, yeah, so weird little book. That was fine, but kind of whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'd say so for the whole thing. The whole series. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think it's a five. Yeah, I'd put it at a five. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. No, no. It's just uh, it's, uh, simple. Well, like you say, it's like Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Which, it doesn't take much. Yeah, you know, it's, I guess that's what they were going for. Or he was going for, I should say. It's a one-man operation. Moving on. Okay, we have uh, the newest issue of Action Comics, Brian Michael Bendis and uh, Steve Epton. Steve Epton. Yeah, doing a pretty good job. Yeah, this is uh, pretty good. We got that. Uh, I liked that we got some more of uh, Dr. Do- Dr. Bones. Uh, yeah. He- he's a pretty interesting character. He's one of those characters who you do like him to show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because he's cool. He's sculpt. That's uh, fun stuff, and we got, uh, I had, you know, I liked the the Chaz, and uh, I forget the name of Lois's character. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway. I don't remember. Gale? No. Here's, here's the problem for me, is that this issue did the cardinal rule, or broke a cardinal rule of storytelling, which is you don't hint at a better story that we could be reading instead and then tell a more boring story than the one you gave, like, a little tease for. Because let me tell you, when it turned well, the page true. and I thought we were going to get a couple of pages of, like, this flashback right. adventure, <laughs> I was like, oh, dope. Uh, oh, oh, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, you just get that single page, and then it's back into uh, just mostly drama. Not really any Superman stuff going on in this issue. I, uh, I mean, not to harp on the, the page, but to me, they talk about... A nemesis, right? Nemesis. Yeah, during and, Nemesis. And there's a character named Nemesis and in the little char- character yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's the only one of all the characters in the panel that aren't like our main guys that we actually see on panel. And his name is Nemesis. Yeah. And he was in a previous operation involving these characters. I am almost wondering if that's our first hint of who like the the bad guy who's currently controlling Leviathan is. Uh, that could be. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Definitely. It's uh, just a, a little hint at something. I mean, went to see Tiger. Went to see Tiger. Agent yeah. of Spiral. Yeah, and he, he seemed pretty cool. Pretty all right guy. <laughs> and uh, that was pretty funny when Chaz turned into Superman, but right. like, he stayed as Chaz just right. in the Superman costume. He's still Chaz, and it's like, oh my god, Chaz is Superman? And I couldn't believe the lengths they were going to to not show us the spiky guy. Yeah, that's annoying with all his, his blue stuff, but we only get him as uh, a black looking uh, almost like a juggernaut-ish guy. Yeah, juggernaut with spike spike shoulders. Yeah, but he's doing some kind of blue energy thing to places. So we, we don't really know anything about that. So I thought it was an all right issue. I enjoyed reading it, uh, but not, not much did happen. Not much happened, and uh, yeah, I mean, for all the excitement I had last issue about the introduction of the concept of Chaz, Agent of Spiral... Yeah. Uh, it pretty much just amounted to them uh, going, going to talk to a guy. Yeah, yeah they, they went and met a guy. <laughs> yeah, and like, them being special agents was really more of a time waster than... Like, For sure. Yeah, they should have just set this up and went and talked to the guy as Superman. 
Well, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'd still give it a five. Yeah, five. I, yeah, I think. I think. I mean, it's really well illustrated. I I had no rag on Epting's illustration on this book in previous issues, but yeah. uh, I thought it looked really good this time. It um, looks good, and it doesn't then drone on too much. Yeah, I'm with you. It's five. Not, I, I can't find a major problem with it. <laughs> All right, so next we have the new issue, issue 15 of The Terrifics. This is the first issue with our new creative team, uh, Jane Lu and Yang coming in to write, Steven Segovia as the artist, and I felt like they didn't miss a beat. Yeah, that's um, true. My one disappointment is that when we got to see the team all fighting the giant snake enemy uh, in this was that it seems like their uh, expanded roster didn't stick because... Uh, offspring, offspring isn't is there, gone. and I didn't see Element Dog. Yeah, that's true. And Element Dog uh, is also nowhere to be seen. Yeah, but I do like the idea of uh, sort of a almost like a reverse Westworld thing is happening, where they're creating a simulation for people to go into, and the simulation is somehow like hacking into reality. Yeah, it and seems like it. Creating digital threats. I, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's weird. I don't I don't know what this frog guy's thing is with the, the evil uh, ne- you know technological people being frog people right, is. Frog men. Um, but we'll, we'll see where that goes it's the classic kind of enemy and the weird thing though is how the issue is turning into like a theology debate thing because they have Mr. Terrific talking to Mrs. Terrific from the other universe and they're talking about how she has faith and he doesn't yeah and uh, then the last page, like, splash reveal is a plastic man saying, we're fighting God, because it seems God. like God is somehow... Oh, yeah, because it's the the thing is uh, copying the plagues of Egypt. That's why they're frogs. Oh, I forgot yeah. that for a second. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it seems... It seems I, I think it's more likely that someone is mimicking God than that God has actually taken over. Well, yeah. Yeah. You don't have God come and actually show up and be all like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to be the villain of this comic. <laughs> like, um, but, but pretty good. Pretty enjoyable. The art was pretty solid. Uh, it wasn't a big step down from Bennett. Nothing super impressive happening, but I really liked the uh, metamorpho and plastic man as snakes to fight the snake bit that was happening early. That yeah, was, until they got swallowed. That was pretty funny. Um, yeah, I'd give it a seven. Mm, I'd give it a six. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. All right. So we got uh, issue nine of Fantastic Four, Dan Slott, Aaron Cooter, uh, Stefano Caselli. On colors, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty good art. I don't know that I've ever liked Aaron Cooter as much as I like his illustrations in this title. It's very nice in this title. Uh, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the whole conclusion. This is the Fantastic Four breakout of whatever trap they're in and then win, win, win. Which is always satisfying. Yeah, it's almost a no problems there. Although they do have a problem at the end because Reed had only gotten them to the save us and Galactus part of the plan. Right, right. Luckily their kids are uh, we're right there at the right time with their teleporter. Right, and I don't remember. Like, did We saw in the last issue Franklin hooking up with this girl that can summon demons and he doesn't actually know who she is. Yeah, I don't think we knew she could summon demons, but right. I remember him running away and meeting somebody and maybe going back to her house to watch the TV. Yeah, I keep getting thrown off by Franklin with blue hair. <laughs> it's really bothering me. I know he's a teenager now and is making terrible decisions and that's the point. But Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I, I don't mind it so much. Yeah, and uh, we got some good Galactus uh, pages. <laughs> like, I felt like they were really leaning into how weird it is that Galactus looks like a dude. Like, maybe it was just me, but, like, when they're really up close to his face and the ground, it's like, oh, man, that's, like, a big dude. That'd be weird to be next to. Oh, uh, yeah, just huge face right there. Like, does Galactus have pores? And can you see them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe those are the kind of questions best left unknown. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was a fun issue overall. I yeah, liked it. Still good doom. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he loses cause, because of his arrogance more than anything, which is how doom should lose. Right, exactly. Um, I liked Johnny. He has uh, such control over his powers that he can even pull heat out of things. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Awesome. I like how he uh, doesn't want to use his powers always. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what would you give it? Um, 
uh, I'd give it a seven. Yeah, yeah, this is a solid seven for me as well. It's interesting that the uh, Fantastic Four and the Fantastic Four pretend both that the terrifics <laughs> are managing such high levels of quality opposite each other while telling very different kind of stories. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Okay, moving on to uh, the fourth issue of Marvel Comics Presents, which I thought was a pretty strong uh, one this time. Not really a weak link in any of the three stories. Yeah, I'll have to rem- try and remember the middle story, but I remember that the first story and the last story were excellent. I'm pretty sure the second story was pretty good, too. Yeah, the uh, Wolverine story by Charles mm-hmm. Sewell, uh, drawn by Palace Sequeira, uh, continues to be a good Wolverine story in the vein I like, where it's, you know, just Wolverine yeah. doing Wolverine things, and in situations he's forced to be in. Like, it doesn't have that much to do with Wolverine's past, or where Wolverine is, or where he's going, and, you know, it's just every ten years he had to get pulled in to fight this, like, creepy toothy guy, the truth. Yeah. And this girl was gonna help him, and I really want to know now what the whole thing last issue was, because she didn't appear to do any sort of nefarious plan that was gonna sacrifice Logan. True. As we thought was gonna happen from the ending of the previous one. Um, but yeah, action packed. They fight the truth. She gets Im- fucking impaled by his stretchy arm and yeah. pulled into the portal. And I don't know. Next issue might continue immediately after. It might be another ten years. Right. <laughs> but uh, it continues to be a very entertaining story. Um, it does. Yeah, yeah. That that one uh, continues to be a seven in quality. Yeah, I'd uh, say so. The Spider-Man story by Daniel Kibblesmith, drawn by Pere Perez. Is uh, Peter's in line to see Star Wars? Right. Back in the day, which I like the period piece ness of this. Like uh, <laughs> this is Peter back in the uh, the seventies. Yeah. And uh, in line with all the nerds. Yeah, and uh, it's just a fun little. He has to save a movie prop from getting stolen from a movie prop place. Where it, uh, I really thought it was going to turn out that the son from the beginning was somehow orchestrating this robbery. Yeah, but I expected him to show his face again. Right, but he was just like a general jackass. Yeah. But uh, thanks to his jackassery, Peter was able to get him to see the movie despite having to give up his place in line because with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah, but you got to go in, his, in the place of that general asshole. <laughs> So, so that was pretty, pretty solid, pretty, pretty nice little one-off, little six-pager or eight-pager, whatever this is. Uh, I'd say it's a six. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And uh, last, uh, written by Benjamin Percy, uh, drawn by Juan Ferreira, uh, it was a, a little Moonlight story, or uh, Moon Knight story, yeah, excuse Knight. me, that was, uh, it was pretty cool. It read very much like the way that Warren Ellis was writing Moon Knight for those six issues, where each issue was just its own little adventure of Mr. Knight in a suit doing detective-y Moon Knight things about a creepy problem. Yeah. Even that that awesome full page of him running through the complex. Exactly. That was the one that triggered me to realize, like, oh, they're full-on doing a riff on the Ellis Shelby Moon Knight. Um, it, it looked great. It worked great. I love that uh, Mark goes to the public library to do his research in his full Moon Knight getup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I pr- appreciated that. And uh, it reminded me a lot of the uh, the Mushroom Spores issue, the ending, where it turns out that it's just this mm. dying guy who's creating evil monsters with his dying thoughts. Yeah. So all Moon Knight has to do is uh, unplug his life support and walk out while straightening his tie like James Bond. Yeah, which is... It's totally cool. It's just going to unplug the guy, walk away. Yeah, yeah, and take care of it, man. That dude's got an <laughs> evil red eye. That dude has the eye that Smoothie has in Happy right now. Yeah. The red right eye. Um, really good. I really enjoyed this. This was an eight for me, that particular story. Yeah. I can't disagree with you on that. I'd also give it an eight. Yeah, I like that- the little midnight. Like a little Moon Knight. Yeah. Where's that Moon Knight solo, man? Oh, man. Like uh, it was doing so good. Let's get that back. You know, yeah. Moon Knight's such a change of pace from everything else that happens in Marvel. So true. So true. Yeah, he's got the crazy. He's got the detective. He's yeah. got the the lonerisms. Yeah. yeah. Even the color palette in that one is like hard po- hard boiled noir. Hard boiled. Yeah. Lots of whites. Lots of blacks. Yeah. Great stuff. Love it. All right, Venom. Moving on to Venom. This is the 13th issue of Venom. It is the War of the Realms Thor tie-in. That's one of those. Right. Uh, this is written by Coolin Bunn, illustrated by Ivan Soello. And, uh, yeah, so this is 
directly uh, following what's been going on in Venom lately. With Venom now uh, has his son who thinks uh, of Eddie as his brother. He thinks that Eddie is his brother, not, right. that, not that he is Eddie's son. And uh, this, the guys from all the other planes of uh, reality are, are yeah. coming in. This was the part to me where I was like, okay, this is what happens when you only read the main book and don't read the tie-ins. When we got to the, the main page, uh, this two-page spread showing the map and which of the realms had taken over which, which individual continents, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was very much like, wow, this story is really accelerating in these tie-ins, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Lots exactly. of stuff happened that we did not see yet. Yeah, you'd think we'd be seeing more ice guys, but I, I guess they are, are all kind of trollish. Yeah, I think these are, even these ladies that we see, the ones that are uh, doing their machinations, and uh, I mean, the, the, yeah, no, I guess that's, that's true, a, they are blue-skinned. Yeah, so I don't know if those are supposed to be from uh, Svartalheim? Jotunheim. Jotunheim, or if they're supposed to be from the same place as Malekith, since they do look like all the blue dark elves. Malekith. From, uh, yeah, wherever. Svartalheim. Svartalheim. Yes. Right. Yes. The, the drow, the dark elves. But uh, it's hilarious, right? The, the the steps that this issue goes through to get Eddie into a suit without ruining the main plot line. Right. They introduce this uh, sage of uh, the these maybe ice troll creatures uh, who has this stone and says, uh, whatever you wish, what you really want, and I know what you want, Eddie. Right, this will make you whatever weapon you want. Yeah, this will make you the weapon you want. And he's like, yeah. And he takes it, and he becomes like this this crazy, extra lizarded out venom. Yeah, it's he's got like doomsday bone spikes coming out of him, and he's got like mm-hmm. uh, Thor character ribbons of like energy uh, runes. Oh yeah, and pasted huge over claws. And uh, yeah, but huge, huge claws like it, he looks more like carnage than venom if not for the coloration yeah that's true and i, I liked uh, how then the mage guy is like all right now do bidding in the name of malika and he's just like nah. no and bites off the guy's arm that awesome. is amazing like yeah it's very funny yeah that shit talking in eddie's head it does not control him it does not work he's too used to having an extra voice in his head yeah he's That's how he explains it it's, he, it's still pushing on him like it wants him to kill it wants him to murder it wants him to do evil but he's like old hat at that <laughs> yeah. like he's like this thing doesn't actually have intelligence like, <laughs> it's just exactly. an urge yeah pretty enjoyable I mean, yeah he gets that axe and that sword and uh, he, he's doing some damage and but then at the end we got that pumpkin headed jack-o'-lantern that's his name Jack of a Lantern, <laughs> right? Right. I meant to say pumpkin headed green goblin, but it came out as Jack of a Lantern, which is his name. Yeah, like uh, uh, he's looking awesome. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's cool that he's showing up. It's interesting because I don't remember if we talked about this on the show or not, but this guy was basically <laughs> the main supervillain of Flash Thompson Venom. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's weird. For some reason, I thought he was dead. But um, I also thought he was dead. <laughs> but yeah, here he is, looking looking dope. Yeah, going to do some jack o' lantern things. Yeah, and him fighting Venom, cool. And I assume that this look he's in isn't what he's going to show up in because he's uh, going to get to use the Dreamstone to summon oh, yeah. the weapon as well. So we'll see what uh, what, what jack o' lantern decides to do. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'd give that one a seven. I thought it was still pretty strong. I think this was an eight for me. Nice. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the art was real solid. Uh, yeah, I was. I think part of it is because I was really expecting this to be garbage fill-in. <laughs> you know, event tie-in. Who cares while we wait for the Donnie to get back writing the main plot? Um, I kind of want to knock it for not only featuring regular Venom on the cover when he's definitely not going to show up. But also, like, using the Null sword on the cover, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's just not going to happen during this thing. So I, I'm tempted to dock at a point. But I just had too good of a time. I liked the the Norse symbiote design a lot. I, I, I like it. 
Yeah, no, nah, there's there's things to worry about with the War of the Realms time, but it still just ended up being a good issue of Venom. Yeah, it seems like, even despite that map, it's not really going to matter too much what's happening in the other books. It's right. just going to be Eddie doing Eddie things while bad stuff is happening. Right. It just happens to be during the War of the Realms. <laughs> right, exactly. And it just happens to be the perfect way for him to get a non-Venom suit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so last up, we have the 1,002nd issue of Detective Comics, written by Peter J. Tomasi, uh, drawn by Brad Walker. Tomasi. Who, man, like I like Peter Tomasi, and not to undersell his contributions here, but damn, Walker is killing it on the art for this book. I'm really starting to become a fan of this guy. It's, like, not quite cartoony, but it's definitely exaggerated. And, like I mentioned last time, the little details, like Batman's lenses being such blatant lenses. Right, yeah. Um, he's using cool uh, panel layouts on the page. Uh, just, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with how this book looks. Yeah, I um, agree with that. I don't know if I like the joke about the bat computer in the car saying, taking fool home. When uh, yeah. Gordon is like, take this fool home. Right, because it makes you wonder, is it, like... Oh shit, does the car not know it's Batman? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and then yeah, it was also, uh, I liked that it kind of turned into a little Robin adventure at the end there. Cool. Damien shows up and he's going to go do some detectiving while Alfred fishes arrowheads out of oh Batman. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, we get the uh, interesting uh, thing that the arrowheads all match the properties of his own suit, the bat suit, which is how they're able to so easily pierce his bat suit. Right. So even though it's still very unlikely that Arkham Knight is going to turn out to be Jason Todd like he is in the video game, uh, he's somebody. He's going to be somebody. There's that hint, and then the fact that you know he takes his mask right. off at the end of the issue, and we don't right. get to see it. In front it, of a, a different Robin, if it is Jason Todd, I mean, that would still paint pretty much makes sense right i wonder i really do wonder if it's going to be somebody that damien would recognize at all like who could it be because it's not jay there's no way it's jason todd <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, goddamn jason todd i was showing up as different villains <laughs> but uh yeah pretty good i mean two solid action sequences the uh day fight at the beginning with uh, Batman and the Arkham Knight and his troops and the cops and the way it turns out and yep. how Arkham Knight obviously has some sense of honor because he doesn't want any of the civilians to die either. In fact, he uses his shield to prevent a cop from getting friendly fired on by one of the other cops. Right, and then they both agreed they'll settle their fight later because Batman's full of holes and there's too many civilians around. Exactly. And uh, Damien is extremely competent even at underwater fighting, which he should be. He gets himself out of the death trap extremely easily maybe he was meant to maybe not um, uh, really seems like the most confident robin oh yeah i mean damien man raised by the league of assassins what right are you gonna do? i mean dick grayson is awesome but he's just a circus guy <laughs> <laughs> so uh this book is also an eight for me i really i really enjoyed this book this week that one's a seven for me all right i enjoyed it too and that is it for this week's new comic reviews. Thanks for listening, everybody. And we will be back with more comic reviews in the very near future. And keep it cool.